Hello all, in this video I'll show you how to run confirmatory fact analysis using Zamovi software. So in order to run this analysis, I'm going to use a, a data set associated with this paper. So uh, part of this paper, I do have constructs like job satisfaction, family satisfaction, work family balance, and then life satisfaction. So life satisfaction is measured using uh, five items. Work family balance is measured using five items. Job satisfaction is measured using three items. Family satisfaction is measured using another three items. For more details, you can go through this uh, paper measurement section. Um, so part of this uh, CFA model, I'll be having uh, four constructs basically. One is uh, life satisfaction and then family satisfaction and then work family balance. Then finally, I'll be having job satisfaction. So these are the four constructs I'll be having. Um, and each and every constructs were measured using their respective items. So work family balance is measured using five items. Life satisfaction is five. And then here this is measured using three. Job satisfaction is also measured using three items. Now uh, the key purpose of uh, performing this confirmatory factor analysis is in order to establish the measurement validity of your model, we need to run CFA. Uh, basically before we do same or maybe before we run any sort of regression based analysis in terms of testing the mediation effect or moderation effect or per se the direct relationship among the constructs. So we need to establish the uh, measurement validity of the model that is uh, uh, I mean kind of mandatory rule in the recent past literature. So unless we provide validity evidences I don't think so. Uh, reviewers will accept our uh, result section whether the results are based on uh, same or uh, based on regression or based on correlation analysis or it can be anything. So first I'll import my data set. So this is the data I'm going to use it for this demonstration purpose. And here as I said earlier job satisfaction is measured using three items and then family satisfaction is measured using another three items and then life satisfaction is measured using five items family balance is also measured using another five items so this is all the item level information i have here and uh, all of these items were measured using one to seven point rating scale now in order to do the confirmatory factor analysis you go to factor and then select confirmatory factor analysis here you need to label your factors so the first factor which i'm going to label here is work family balance and you, what you need to do is you need to drag the respective items which is representing this particular latent construct over here this is the way how you can drag it now you add the new factor the new factor is job satisfaction so in order to add the job satisfaction relevant items you just select the items and then you drag it here next construct is family satisfaction so you similarly add this three items over here and then you add another factor this is life satisfaction so now you add this five items over here So now I have created five different constructs here and then sorry four different constructs here and then uh, I also uh, labeled um, all of my latent constructs. So work family balance is labeled as WFBAL, job sa satisfaction is labeled as job sat and then family satisfaction is labeled as F sat, life satisfaction is labeled as life sat. So this is the way how I have labeled my items. Uh, instantly on the right hand side if you look at the output you will be able to see the factor loading table so this factor loading will tell you the unstandardized regression weights for uh, work family balance one on work family balance and so on so basically all of this uh, me measurements were done on the basis of reflective measurement theory so these uh, loadings will tell you the uh, relationship between your item and then the latent construct and each and every items were statistically significant because all of these p values are significant. Now what I can do is I can go to this uh, estimates. You can ask for uh, 
model fit values um, yeah you can also click additional output so here you can also ask for the path diagram if you want to do some modification changes you can also use this modification option residual covariances are not required uh, based on the modification indices if you want to covary any of the residual terms that can be done here i don't want to do that um, then what else i can explore here um, yeah i can ask for the standardized estimates so these are the few things you can ask it from the system uh, so this standardized loadings will help you to estimate the average variance extracted value as well as your um, construct reliability value uh, now what i can do is uh, i can go through the output so if you look at this uh, i'm getting chi square value of 201 and degrees of freedom is 98 so uh, basically in uh, confirmatory factor analysis or sem the degrees of freedom formula is p into p plus minus 1 divided by 2 this is the formula degrees of freedom equal to p into p plus 1 divided by 2 minus k so this p is nothing but number of items available in your model and then uh, this k is nothing but number of parameters you are going to estimate so if you look at this cfa model so basically i have uh, uh, 5 plus 5 uh, 3 plus and then uh, 5 plus and then 3 plus so these are these many items i have so totally 16 items are available which means that 16 loadings i'm going to estimate and then i do have 16 errors because each and every item will have their own error values so which means that 16 errors also i'm going to estimate then i have six co correlations basically here you will be having correlation among each and every constructs so the possible correlations will be six correlations here this is how you can also understand this so everything put together you will get 38 here so basically 38 parameters you are going to estimate now you substitute the 16 here 16 into 16 plus 1 divided by 2 minus 38 if you solve this you will get 98 as a answer so this is a way how the system is also computing the degrees of freedom value with respect to this output is concerned uh, if you look at the cfa value this is pretty good uh, it should be above 0.9 i'm i'm getting satisfactory result here and in the rmsa also uh, it should be less than 0 0.08 according to her book citation here also i'm getting 0 0.0599 as a value uh, approximately 0. 0 uh, 0, 06 that's the value so this is pretty good so this is a way how you can run the analysis this is how your uh, uh, confirmatory factor analysis model will look like um, if you want to see the modification indices you can also uh, do that and uh, you just ask the system to pro provide about 10 as a value so wherever you see uh, power change value about 10 those uh, covariances can be done this is with respect to residual covariances if you keep uh, residual covariance between work family balance 1 and work family balance 2 item your model fit value may change a uh, uh, bit uh, but uh, i'm not getting really drastic uh, uh, i mean uh, suggestion here yes here ls4 with ls3 if i connect this uh, definitely i'll be able to slightly improve my model fit value that's the kind of suggestion i'm getting here uh, this is how you can infer your confirmatory factor analysis result. So if you want to um, uh, uh, basically uh, uh, compute your um, uh, AV value and then CR value manually you can also do it. Otherwise while running the same also you can directly get it from this particular Zamovi software that is also possible. So here let me ask for residual covariances and then uh, yeah this is what the residual estimates so with the help of this residual es estimates what you can do is you can uh, uh, compute the uh, av value sorry you can compute the construct reliability value so now manually i'll show you how to do it you first copy this table and then you open an excel file so in order to compute the av value i mean the av formula is sum of lambda square divided by n so n is nothing but uh, uh, number of items this is the av formula basically 
So a lambda is nothing but your loadings. So first let me compute the AV values for each and every constructs. I'll paste this table here. I'll remove some of the unwanted uh, columns here. Basically, I need only the standardized estimates. The rest of the things I can remove it because I know that all of the loadings are statistically significant. So now I have the standardized estimates uh, in the dth column. So now what I can do is I can compute the squared loadings based on these values. Let me keep it in 12 font size. So now um, here I have computed the squared rollings, loadings. Now let me compute the AV value. So in order to compute the AV value, simply you can use this average uh, function. So you select this five items. This is the AV value for work family balance. Let me copy paste this over here. And then you select this three items. This is the AV value for job satisfaction and then you copy paste this over here this is the AV value for family satisfaction again let me copy paste this over here and then I'll expand this inclusion so this is the AV value for life satisfaction so this is how you can compute the average variance extracted value manually using this formula now if you want to compute the construct reliability value the formula for computing construct reliability value or McDonald Omega so sum of lambda whole square divided by sum of lambda whole square plus sum of uh, error so this is a formula which you you need to incorporate in terms of computing this uh, construct reliability value so in order to estimate this i need the error values so again you can go back to the output so here you have the error values basically uh, let me show you yeah so here you have the standardized error values you can compute this otherwise one more logic what you can use is so simply you just uh, do this calculation 1 minus lambda square will give you the error value 1 minus lambda square will give you the error value this is nothing but standardized error values for example you can also match this result with the uh, obtained output from your uh, analysis for example for work family balance item 1 the standardized error value is 0 0.166 if you go and check it here you will also get the exact value see for work family balance item 1 the standardized estimate that is error value is 0 0.1656 so this is the way how you will also get uh, estimate the error now let me compute the sum of sum of uh, um, lambda uh, i mean loading square that, that is what i'm going to compute now so in order to compute this sum of uh, loading square you just use this sum function you select this raw loadings and then you keep a cap and then two this will give you the sum of squared loadings for work family balance this is for sum of loading whole square value for um, job satisfaction similarly this is the sum of uh, lambda whole square value for family satisfaction and then this is a sum of loading whole square for life satisfaction so now to compute the CR value that is construct reliability value let me use this formula sum of loading whole square divided by sum of loading whole square plus the sum of error value so now uh, what I can do is directly I can apply the formula otherwise uh, first let me compute this sum of error value equal to sum of this five errors similarly here and then 
this three error values and then over here now CR value is equal to sum of loading whole square divided by sum of loading whole square plus sum of error this is what the CR value for your work and balance job satisfaction and then family satisfaction and then life satisfaction this is a way how you can compute the construct reliability values manually with the help of your excel program um, in the same output uh, you can directly get the uh, cr value av values everything uh, straight away you can uh, get it from the software but in cfa uh, i mean the software development team did not incorporate that particular option i'm not sure uh, uh, here you don't get the ready-made output for your construct reliability and then av values Thank you. This is the way how you can do the confirmatory factor analysis.